Hey folks, um, so we're filming downstairs today. I felt like filming in front of my computer for a couple of reasons. One, because it stays warmer down here when the heat is on. And two, I have a lot of research to reference and I figured it would be easier just to be sitting right in front of my computer in my stream setup. So maybe I'll start doing more videos here. Um, so hi, welcome to my stream setup. I have anime boys behind me and manga as well as um, a copy of The Sims on Xbox. So, you know. <laughs> Also, this camera autofocuses when my camera upstairs does not autofocus as I'm filming. So, hi, hello. <sighs> Today we're going to talk about Ticketmaster and Taylor Swift. I know, Abigail's talking about Taylor Swift. Who am I? This is one of those things that has been a thorn in my side for a long time. Uh, Ticketmaster, ticket prices, um, ticketing agencies, ticketing in general. Um, I've been going to live music for 14 years at this point. I started seeing shows kind of regularly when I was a sophomore in college. So I've been, I've been seeing live music for a very, very long time. And Right now, there's been a bit of a kerfuffle around Ticketmaster and Taylor Swift's tour and the process the Ticketmaster took in selling the tickets to T-Swift's upcoming tour. And I will say, I listened to the new record. It's really good. I'm, I, I wouldn't call myself a Swifty. Like I'm definitely not a Swifty. Like I, for the longest time, really didn't like her music, but I've never really known much about it. And I just, I had some friends tell me that I needed to listen to this new one and they're like, oh my God, this is not the Taylor Swift that you remember. And I was like, okay, okay. Also I saw who produced it and I was like, all right, let me give it a shot. And I really liked it. I really did. And when I saw that she was going on tour, specifically the fact that she was going on tour with Phoebe Bridgers as one of her support acts, I was like, oh, am I gonna try and go see Taylor Swift? And then as soon as the ticket presale uh, went live, I was like, no, I'm not even gonna try. I'm not even going to try or attempt to get tickets to this tour because it was, um, it was bad. It was very bad. <laughs> there was problems with the pre-sale, with the emails, with the queuing system, with the money, with the ticketing prices. Looking at how frustrating it was for so many people trying to get tickets to this concert, I was angry for them. I was so angry for them. <laughs> so absolutely frustrated that I needed to look more into this and I needed to make a video about it because I hate Ticketmaster. I have hated Ticketmaster for a very long time and um, there are several reasons why and we're gonna talk about them. After we cut to me from yesterday when I was trying on some new Warby Parker glasses for today's sponsor, Warby Parker. Today's video is once again sponsored by our friends at Warby Parker. I've loved Warby Parker's glasses for close to a decade at this point, and I could not recommend them enough. These ones that I really, really like from this five try on set I got are Farah. And like, I don't know, they're very like 70s librarian. I don't know why I'm, I'm digging them. I'm digging the tortoise shell. I'm digging the cat eye. Something I really, really love about them as a company is that uh, besides the five at home try ons that you get, which is the nicest and easiest way to try on glasses, I swear. I much prefer getting these in the mail than actually going to a store. Um, although they do have stores, they do have Warby Parker stores. They have a handful near us and some of them do actually have places where you can actually get eye exams. So that's what Josh actually did a few months ago. He went and got his eyes checked and got a prescription and bought a pair of glasses and now he wears them. And you can check if you have a retail location near to you on the Warby Parker website where they have listed all 190 retail locations, including where you can get your eyes checked. With the five at home try-ons, you can do what I'm doing right now on screen. What you're seeing is that you can get a really good look at how they look on your face. You can wear them around. You can get a feel for them. You don't have the same kind of added pressure you might have while picking out glasses with a customer service representative standing there with you where you might feel a little bit of pressure, I guess. The first time I did this years and years and years ago, I might see if I can find a clip from when I first tried on Warby Parker glasses all of those years ago. I literally just made a video trying on glasses. I tried them on knowing the the style of nose bridge I like, knowing the style of shape and like the materials. 
I know which pairs I think I'm going to like more. And because everything is all under your account, you get a full history of all the pairs of glasses you've tried on and you can remind yourself, oh, I liked those pairs. I can maybe get a pair of those. Another thing that's really great about Warby Parker is that if you aren't sure exactly where you wanna start with your glasses, what shape you're going for, you can actually take a little quiz at the beginning when you log into the website. You can see what sizes you might want, what colors you might be into, what materials, all kinds of different things that you can actually narrow down to start out with. And then obviously you can just look through all the glasses as well, but having the quiz there is really nice if you aren't sure where to start. And if you buy two pairs, you get 15% off your order, which is also awesome, especially for the holidays. hey -o. The ones that I got besides Farah are Nadia. Nadia feels a little more like 90s librarian. <laughs> These feel a little more like 70s librarian. These remind me a little 80s too. I don't know, I like them. I like them a lot. I usually never was into styles like this or shapes like this, but I've been surprised lately. And then the sunglasses I got were Priscilla, which is this pair. I might get a pair of sunglasses. Priscilla and D -d 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 Nancy. Oh my God, these are all like very 80s names. Farah, Nancy, Priscilla, what was the other one? Nadia, and then the last pair. So I never actually tried on this pair up until now because I was pretty sure that the frames were too thick for me, not really my vibe, but I wanted to see how they looked, especially with my newer hairstyle. And you know, I don't hate them. And these are Winston. I do feel a little bit like the old man from Up, but I don't hate it. It's cute. I dig it. I, dig it. <laughs> I like it. They're so cute. So if any of this sounds good to you, like it has been for me for almost a decade, and you would like to try five free pairs of glasses, no purchase necessary, go to warbyparker.com slash Abby. That's warbyparker.com slash A-B-B-Y. I love my glasses. I love having several pairs that I can wear with different outfits, ones that are good for blue light, ones that are good for the sun. I have a pair of transition lenses. I have several pairs and I like being able to switch them out for like, I don't know, different, different looks, different vibes, different styles. Every time somebody asks me on a social media post or in a video, they're like, what glasses are you wearing, Abby? They're always Warby Parker. So ser seriously, check out Warby Parker at my link below and uh, thank me later. Okay, back to the video. Hi, welcome back to today. <sighs> Ticketmaster, oh, Ticketmaster. A little background on how Ticketmaster became the giant. In 2009, uh, Ticketmaster and Live Nation actually merged. Not long after Live Nation had announced that they were gonna be having their own ticketing system because Live Nation for the most part was known for putting on concerts, for organizing tours for Live Nation presents this tour, Live Nation presents this festival. Live Nation presented many festivals around here and I've been to plenty of Live Nation events. Many of them I was there to photograph so I wasn't necessarily buying tickets so my perspective on buying tickets is a little bit different than most people because I'm very lucky in that I don't actually have to buy tickets all the time when I wanna go see live things because I can be like, I wanna press pass, I wanna go work. So I'm working, but I also get into the show for free. There's a benefit for me, but with Ticketmaster and Live Nation merging in 2009, they now own 70% of the ticketing market. 70% of the ticketing market is ridiculous because if you think about how many other companies and how many smaller companies might be selling tickets in their local areas or selling tickets through one company, the fact that 70% is still just one company that like all of those other smaller companies only take up 30%, that amount of market share for one company is bad news for any industry. It led to a lot of antitrust concerns. It led to a lot of anti-consumer processes and so many problems that actually Congress got involved. <laughs> Congress got involved to try and break them up and it didn't really go anywhere, but they're actually looking into it again. I actually saw Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweet about it in this whole Taylor Swift issue. It's like, <laughs> she tweeted it and people are like, clearly AOC is a Swifty because she's paying attention to this because it really is something that people should pay attention to because antitrust laws are things that affect consumers 
constantly. We've seen it with so many industries, including Amazon, where you see so much market share under one company. AWS, Amazon Web Services, owning so much of that market as well. You see Comcast, so much of the cable companies. And because of that, you get a lot of uh, uh, bad practices that really only benefit them and don't really benefit the consumer in any way, shape, or form. Now, before I get more deep into that, why were people particularly mad at Taylor Swift? Because she was also involved in all of this. Obviously people were mad at Live Nation, people were mad at Ticketmaster because not only was the process really complicated, you basically had to sign up to get a pre-sale invite code. It was like a lottery. It was like a lottery. <laughs> the process to get Taylor Swift tickets from what I could gather because I didn't go through the process myself. There's been a lot of articles and videos and TikToks and people talking about their experiences. You essentially had to email into a lottery that you might get a chance to buy tickets. And then you had to get into a queue of millions of people. 14 million people queued for this. 14 million people broke the site. Say what you will, there's a lot of people saying that like, how does Ticketmaster not have the capacity, blah, 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 for this many people. It's a little more complicated. Like you can't just like plug in more servers and like add more bandwidth. It is a little bit more complicated, but the problem was they made the process so complicated that it made it so much more frustrating for people who got the email that they could get a chance to get a ticket, getting in line, the website crashing, getting pushed to the back of the queue. So they're sitting in these queues for hours on end trying to get tickets. And then when they get to the end, they get kicked off. Or when they get to the end, some people got charged like 14 times, 14 times, and then they didn't get tickets. It was horror story after horror story. Once they got to the end to buy tickets, things were being sold anywhere between 25 and $50,000 for some tickets. If you got tickets under $1,000, you were lucky. You were lucky if you got tickets under $1,000 for floor seats. And I know a couple people who managed to get tickets. Um, I was like, holy shit, what, what deal did you make to get in this line to get these tickets? Because looking at how the process was, I'm like, no wonder people were upset. I don't really buy tickets from Ticketmaster because of the fees, because of how much money you have to spend on these additional things. If I'm buying tickets for a show or for a concert, usually it's at something that has a smaller company backing them, that has their own ticketing company, or if I'm just like going to a gig, I literally just walk in and pay the door person $12. Most of the shows I go to are between 10 and $20 when I get to the door, but I don't go to a lot of like big concerts. Like the last big concert I went to was when Libby and I saw Harry Styles at the beginning, no, at the end of 2021. It was about a year ago, I think at this point, but we had bought tickets two years before. <laughs> she had bought tickets two years before for Christmas of 2019. And then the world shut down and then they had to postpone the show for two years. But I don't have a lot of experience with Ticketmaster because of that. So seeing how bad it's gotten, what didn't surprise me, didn't surprise me at all, because in 2018, this is when I really, really got a bad taste in my mouth about Ticketmaster. In 2018, which is still like eight years after they merged with Live Nation, journalists went undercover and found that Ticketmaster was allegedly colluding with StubHub, the scalping website, that they were helping them that they were basically just benefiting StubHub so that they could benefit each other. So ever since then, I have only bought things from Ticketmaster if it was for like a gift for a family member. And ever since then, especially tickets have gotten to be so expensive. And I didn't necessarily know why they were that expensive. I figured for the longest time that it was because they, Ticketmaster and StubHub were just like connecting their own websites. That isn't the case, I, I thought it was, but they are still separate websites. But I didn't realize that such a thing as dynamic pricing existed, which is where Taylor Swift comes back into play because apparently dynamic pricing is basically like when you are trying to get an Uber during peak hours, because it calculates the prices of tickets based on demand, which is why you had prices in the tens of thousands of dollars because the demand was so high as in like 14 million people. And they also didn't restrict resale tickets. Apparently that's a thing you can do on Ticketmaster. You can restrict them, which is great, but the problem is Taylor Swift didn't tell them to restrict resale tickets 
and approved the dynamic pricing because one, that benefits Ticketmaster, two, that benefits Taylor Swift, and it means more money for everybody. The only thing that happens when you increase ticket sales like that is you get more scalpers trying to um, buy them up and sell them for even more. You get this exclusivity of live music that you're excluding people who don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to drop for tickets which just makes it way more difficult for anybody to see live entertainment. And then even after all this happened, Ticketmaster canceled sales. In this article on Forbes, um, the Times reported that on November 15th, 2 million tickets were sold, more than any other artist in a single day, according to the company, out of 14 million who wanted to buy. Ticketmaster had planned the public sale of any tickets that remained after the pre-sale process, but canceled the sale. Due to extraordinarily high demands on ticketing systems and insufficient remaining ticket inventory to meet that demand, tomorrow's public on sale for Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour has been canceled, Ticketmaster announced on the 17th. And then this article in Rolling Stone, literally it's called, Ticketmaster has been secretly cheating on you with its own scalpers. Undercover investigation reveals a professional scalping racket run by Ticketmaster itself. So in 2018, there's an article, several articles, um, but the investigation by CBC News and the Toronto Star is uh, kind of what uncovered all of this. So I will leave links to a bunch of articles below if you'd like to read more into it, because it is very frustrating. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what comes of this because the fees and the dynamic pricing on Ticketmaster sales are so limiting for people. Like it literally makes it so that the only people who can de get tickets are people like that girl on TikTok that complained about having to spend $8,000 on two Harry Styles tickets when she had seen him 14 times on the same tour. So all it does is it makes the only people who are able to go are the people with thousands and thousands of dollars of disposable income that they're able to spend at the drop of a hat. I don't have that. Many people don't have that. Most people don't have that. So all it does is it, it excludes people. And it's not fair because live music should be accessible because it's very important. It's a big part of our culture and making ticket sales this Hunger Games-esque <laughs> endeavor is only hurting customers and it's only benefiting Ticketmaster and Live Nation and the artists who take part in it and who allow it, which is why people were mad at Taylor Swift. Like, I know there's no possible way to boycott Ticketmaster and Live Nation because of how much market share they have. That's the problem when you have stuff like that is that they're too big to fail. Not in the same way that like the banks were too big to fail back in 2008. Was that 2008? The market collapse, I think? I was right out of high school. But because they have so much power and so much control of the market, to not buy things from them and to not partake in any of their business, it's not easy if you like mainstream artists, if you like pop artists. And I'm not about to tell somebody you can't listen and you can't want to go see the bands that you like because you need to boycott the ticketing system that they use because that's not fair. And that's the problem really is that they can get away with treating customers like crap because they don't have significant competition like Amazon, like Comcast. They can afford to have you sit on the phone for 20 minutes trying to press buttons to get to where you need to go and never giving you access to an actual person on the phone. They can afford to give you the worst customer service to send you the wrong product. They can afford to incessantly message you and email you and send you mail, send you paper mail wanting you back. Like they can afford to do that because there's nobody that's going to compete with them. When you have all the control, you don't have to be good. You don't have to be better because um, you're gonna be the easiest option regardless. It sucks, it really sucks, but it it it's kind of a fact of life. And so really all we can do is <laughs> like, A, just be aware of things and share things with people. Um, I'm really happy that AOC brought it up because I feel like she uses social media in a really good way. And I feel like she utilizes it really smartly and definitely kind of bringing things up with your local politicians and bringing things up with people in power to try and get these antitrust laws passed to get companies broken up because you start to see it with stuff like Disney acquiring so much of 20th Century Fox, acquiring Marvel, acquiring Star Wars, acquiring all of these things, making it that they have control over so much entertainment and so much movie history. Like that, it gets to a scary point when you keep buying up companies 
And then also we can we can encourage bands and artists to not approve the dynamic pricing and to not approve um, aftermarket sales because they can tell the ticketing companies to do that. Like they're the ones with the power here. They're the ones that can be like, hey, Ticketmaster, I'm not okay with um, you allowing people uh, to jack up the prices on my tickets. Let's not do that. Like the artists are the ones with the power. And I just wish that more artists would actually like take that power and do something with it and not just, you know, pick what's best for their bottom line because it's, it, it, without the artists, Ticketmaster and Live Nation have nothing. And without the fans, the artists have nothing. The people who are always getting screwed over are the fans and the consumers. It sucks. I don't like it. <sighs> anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I just really was, was feeling like I wanted to rant and I wanted to kind of deep dive into this because I know that it's been on a lot of people's minds because I've seen the internet. I've seen how many people have been trying to get tickets and I am so sorry for the people who didn't and the, the people who had to sit in line and the people who wasted hours of their day trying to get tickets. It's like you wasted so many hours and that feels terrible. Like it really does. It shouldn't be a normal thing. It shouldn't be normalized. The tickets are this expensive and this hard to get and with this many fees because the fees, the fees, the fees on Ticketmaster's website, the worst, the absolute worst worst. So, uh, check out the links to the articles. I'll have articles linked below in the description, as well as the Warby Parker link to try five free pairs of glasses. So definitely go check that out as well. I very much appreciate it. When you guys check out my sponsors, it helps me out a lot. For today's song of the day, actually, today's song of the day is Drive Off a Bridge by Jakey. Uh, Jakey, aka Nakey Jakey here on YouTube who makes content very infrequently, but the content he does make is so good and so well put together that I don't even care that he only uploads like a couple times a year, but he put out an EP and it's really, really good. He put out the first song like 10 months ago, I think when Pine Barrens came out, but he just released it the other day and I've been listening to it non-stop and particularly Drive Off a Bridge. It's the first song on the EP and I'm obsessed with it. It's so good. You should listen to it. It's so freaking good. Definitely go check it out. I will link that below as well. If you would like to follow me anywhere else on social media, my Instagram and my Twitter are both, I'm gonna see if I can switch them to Abbers. I'm gonna see, but I don't think I can change my YouTube URL, but I don't wanna keep the 07. Uh, fine, uh, well, we'll see. They'll be linked below. Um, it's either Abbers07 or Abbers. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. So definitely go check me out any of those places, uh, particularly Twitch. I really like streaming there. It's really fun. I play a lot of The Sims. I do a lot of building. So if you would like to hang out with me and play some games, definitely go follow me on Twitch if you have a Twitch account. Thanks for watching everybody. Um, let me know what you think of this setup down here. It's a little bit different for me, but I feel like it's almost easier to sit and talk in front of my computer. And I kind of understand why so many people do it on YouTube. I was like, oh, I can have my notes like right in front of my face. I don't have to like look down at my phone and look at my notes. Amazing. <laughs> like I love my filming location upstairs. Like for makeup stuff, I'll keep doing it up there. But like the kind of researched videos, I like them down here. Thanks for watching everybody. Um, check out the links down below and I will see you after Thanksgiving. Have a good holiday. Stay safe. Bye.